subliminal messaging and and the influence particularly that comes from music it's high so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about some very interesting um obviously issues particularly referring to this 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 long broad and and quite complex subject uh but obviously it's going to include some very um uh, what what more psycho uh analysis in terms of more more educated issues re regarding this the subject in particular so yeah so let's just get into it so the first part i want to start with is is obviously an understanding of what subliminal messaging is subliminal messaging uh so subliminal messaging or stimuli is is is, is actually stimuli that lies below what we call a threshold of conscious awareness so when when we deal with things related to the mind and the brain um, there's certain things that always uh, register uh, within our minds or our, our brains but 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 are always almost registered God does not be aware you know you, you are able to accept certain things without your your volition or, or accepting of those things, but ultimately your body, your your brain and your mind accepts it um, without without you your willingness towards it. So when we talk that it's below the threshold of a conscious awareness, for instance, uh, one of the things you'll discover as we continue is um, when you grow older, the older you get, obviously there are certain things your your brain or your, uh, tends to miss or 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 even your ears tend to miss the older you get, for instance, there are certain frequencies your mind can no longer grasp. Uh, can hear or can perceive but low in, in tonality, but uh, the older you get, obviously you start missing out on some of these interesting concepts. Uh, and, and so with age, there are certain things that we obviously are not aware of, for instance, there are things that children can perceive, and because they 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 still quite uh, naturally, they they still quite um, um, are, their senses are quite powerful at, at at a very young age. But the older you get, obviously, they lose some some strength around certain areas and things like that. And and because they fall, we continue with the definition. Because they fall below the absolute threshold level ATL, we can't perceive a subliminal message even if we are looking for it. So those of you who studied marketing would understand how, how important this, this, this subject is because uh, if you want to really get something across, sometimes it only takes just one phrase or one particular sentence or one word uh, that can change the, 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 the psychometric landscape altogether for someone who's, who's listening to the message you're trying to send across. So um, they, they actually spend a lot of time trying to define um, um, either a marketing strategy or, or a catchphrase that would be necessary to get people eating something. Uh, one of the things you're going to get as we continue is for instance, there was an there was an ad that was what that was thrown off the 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 um, on the lineup it, 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 on TV. So con commercial commercial. I'm talking about the advertisement, the advert that was cast off television because of the amount of subliminal messaging that was there, and and uh, so it almost forced you to go purchase that thing immediately after watching that. So that's how strong subliminal messaging is. But we're going to particularly go into the details and try and understand what we're referring to. Eventually, once we get to the issues of music, we will then understand how, how these things then tie up and, and, and work together. So, so just, just to understand that we, we, there are certain things that we naturally perceive that we don't even realize that we're doing. For instance, how many of you have been in a, I've been in a taxi, uh, so let's just say you're a Christian, and, and I know this example I'm using is a general example, which a lot of us have been through. You're in a taxi, and suddenly they play some interesting music, 
uh, uh, that, 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 that house music and they play this house music, you don't want to listen to it. You know, uh, you are on your way to the Sabbath or to worship God uh, on the Sabbath and uh, you are in this text and suddenly it's playing this and your interest is not there. Your interest is particularly you're heading towards church and you're excited about going to uh, church and, and being early for Sabbath school. And as you are on your way there, no interest in the music whatsoever. As soon as you get off the taxi and suddenly <laughs> you are tapping your foot, you're going do, 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 do. unconsciously, it, it begins to happen. And, and this is what we're talking about. There's a message that's been passed over to you. Although you don't consciously, you're not interested. It's subconsciously, your, your, your body or your senses have, 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 have accepted this, this type of messaging. But I, and I know I'm, I'm being too broad about it, but that's ultimately what, what we are talking about here. Okay, cool. Uh, so when, when we really go broad into this subject, um, there's, there's always a, a, a definition between supraliminal and what we call subliminal. So there's always a, a now, obviously, some years back, we were only looking at the, the issues of, of subliminal. But over time, uh, we began to separate these things and, and make them very, very distinct. So there's what we call supraliminal. Uh, anything that's supraliminal is, is basically above what we call the absolute threshold or the ATL. And anything that's subliminal then would fit underneath um, the, the, the threshold. So anything that's supraliminal messaging, you can tell what the message is because it's, it's, it's quite consciously uh, uh, seen or understood that, yeah, there's some subliminal messaging being passed. But then there's what we call subconsciously, uh, subconsciously messaging that gets passed on, which, which obviously falls below the ATL threshold. So subliminal stimuli cannot be perceived with us being aware, even if, we're looking, if we, even if we look for them. In contrast, supraliminal stimuli can be perceived by the conscious mind, although we often fail to, to notice them. But it's always there. I think the other thing is when you start thinking about these concepts, you, you'll, you'll, you, one of the things you realize is that actually there's a lot of this, but we, we sometimes tend not to pay attention to, to, to these things, but they ultimately are there. Okay. So types of some subliminal messages. So the types of subliminal messages which we talk about generally, there are three types of subliminal messages. One is subvisual messages. Um, so visual cues that are flashed so quickly, generally a few milliseconds, that people don't generally perceive them. So you could be watching something and suddenly something goes flashing quite quickly. And it's not easy to see these things on the natural eye. But when you when you begin to slow these things down, you begin to see, OK, phrase by phrase. Oh, actually, yeah, wow, interesting. Uh, you slow these things down. Wow, wow. Um, I'm going to tell you something interesting. Uh, Walt Disney, as an example, has has faced a number of lawsuits, particularly on on what we are talking about here. So, but sometimes the uh, the subliminal messaging that's being passed through can also be quite enormous in, in that instance. And we're going to talk about it as we continue. Uh, then number two, we have what we call sub-audible messages. This is this can be done by using so, sort of low volume audio cues that are inserted into a louder audio source, such, such as music. Uh, sometimes you, you can nestle a, a particular message um, with, within a loud source of music, but the message is quite clear and you, your body seems to accept whatever you've been told uh, through, through, through that music. Uh, by the way, uh, do you know that a lot of um, society, uh, if you want to change, uh, and th this is quite... This is quite unique and very very interesting to note that uh, music has more had more impact on society more than anything else. Um, one of the things we've noticed is that the change in society, particularly between eras, has been separated by a different tone or, or change in music types. Uh, you can tell that the, that the stage in South Africa is quite different from a social social perspective because of the music that we play today. Uh, the, the energies, the, the 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 type of attitudes people hold today generally tell that yeah it, it's it's almost linked to the type of music that people listen to generally today. Uh, during the times of um, 
yeah, yeah, okay. But but generally, that's what we're talking about. Every break of sanctuary, every break of of millennia, every break of 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 of, of major influences over time, you'd realize that music has played a major role in, in in what we are talking about now. Number three, then we have what we call backmasking, an audio message that is recorded backwards with the intention of playing it forward to disguise the the reversed message. Um, uh, that's also some of the things we we've seen. Okay, so when I talk about lawsuits, particularly well. Disney has had to face one of them is is obviously using things like backmasking for some of the audio things. Yeah, some of these cases are not generally open to the general public, but um, if you dig deep, you, you you understand what we are referring to here. So it's interesting uh, that there are things we see generally actually sending a particular message to Nomasngakatang, but they do. Okay. So that's why ad people pay a lot of money just for adverts, you know? Um, people pay a lot of money just for adverts. Guys, like I said, my internet is unstable, so in case I bomb out, I'll just bomb in again. Uh, so don't, 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 don't lose heart. Yeah, today this is a bad day. Okay, so influence one, and particularly we're talking about influence here. So influence, number one, which we all need to understand, can be perceived or not perceived, but ultimately it's 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 influence either way. Uh, days ago, I was actually sitting with a, a, a someone who reports to me and I was, I was I, I, taking them through, you, you know, uh, um, an assessment. And one of the things they said to me, which I, I can't forget, so... Uh, tell me one of your successes and he was he was he was actually referring to how he's trying by all means to match up to to someone you know and ask him why and i said you, you know when i look at him is the, the things he wants to attain but he's always looking at how this other person is doing so again influence um and in, you think of influence in, in twofold one is this direct influence and in this case it's not direct at all but this guy is always looking at this person, is always trying to match up. Whatever he does, he wants to also do. Um, and, and so influence is, it, it has an outcome to it. And, and when we talk about this subject, particularly you need to understand that uh, there's generally an outcome. The outcome is it needs to show or the, the outcome needs to be that person needs to become something or that person needs to be like something or that person needs to, needs to get to a point where... Uh, the, there's a reflection that that person needs to, to needs to show or something like that. I hope that makes sense. So again, um, a lot of this works around sensations and around emotions and around feelings. Uh, as an example, uh, if I were to play uh, some some very somber music, uh, your, your your emotions tend to change particular. But we go go into that as soon as we get to the music. Uh, part. Uh, I've I've seen women cry when they watch movies. I've seen men cry when they watch movies. I've seen, and and in this thing, it, 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 think about it. It's you know for a fact it's not true. Like you know what you're watching is not true. But and then the told to say I said took my lulandi tissue man just to look at because this person is so taken but what they're looking, and that's how strong sometimes these messages get passed. Uh, maybe as an example, maybe I'm exaggerating, but but think about this. Okay, how many of you have have, have reacted because of something you've watched? Maybe the Queen or eight generations. I've seen people literally say they don't want to watch something again because someone is no longer in the queen or someone has died in the queen or someone. It's so amazing. And not only that, but let me tell you something interesting is that subliminally, we have also accepted a particular lifestyle uh, that we see and, and some of us may want to engage that a bit more. It's it's almost like it, we, we've become addicted in seeing something particularly that has been flashed on our screens every day. So that's why some of us keep looking forward to seeing these things because it's almost like our minds and our brains have gotten used to influencing you. Yeah, it's influencing you. It's changing your lifestyle. Eventually, you start behaving like Uda Queen eventually you start behaving like rich forester eventually you start talking like uh yeah and love becomes you know uh, 
the template of love becomes or the template of behavior becomes as what you have seen particularly on the screen as is, is, is very interesting but if you start thinking of it in that fashion then you'll begin to understand how how broad this this whole subject is and we're only just touching the surface literally with what we are doing here today okay so other forms of we we talked about uh uh the sub but there's a superliminal uh uh, uh messaging uh just want to make sure if you come in just make sure you mute yourself sorry sorry uh yeah okay it's yeah, muted okay cool uh so think about the book of genesis 3 verses 1 to 3 you remember uh the story of adam and eve and then in yoga eafiga eve or the snake comes to eve and says hath god said you shall not surely die you know and and that in itself sends a very strong message and one begins to question whether or not the authority behind god's statement when he said you shall not eat thereof you know it begins to cast doubt and ultimately the influence and and that phrase alone that phrase alone was so powerful that namhlanje the whole world is 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 caught up in in this great controversy simply because of of a one powerful phrase had god said doubt finish she was gone had god said you shall not surely die like as 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 simple as that was it was powerful as simple as that was it it it's it was so powerful that today we are caught up in this uh in, in this mess because of that most powerful statement yes so uh, do not underestimate the power of 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 subliminal or supraliminal messaging and and that's what we 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 are referring to here uh psalms 119 verse 11 thy word have i hid in my heart that i may not sin against thee so the question really is is what how how much of god's word really exists within your heart or your mind that 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 actually creates a buffer against some of these things we are talking about now so as these things come in how much protection how many antivirus anti antivirus protection or biblical antivirus do you have to 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 guard against some of the things that come out different directions and that's why the bible says we always to you, you know no no uh, um feed on god's word daily and 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 pray and and really really as you continue to read god's word and address in your heart the more of god's word that you that you really put in it creates a buffer so that every time you meet these statements or you meet these these interesting things your heart is already packed with these things and you're able to to almost not easily digest uh but again it's 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 about how much of a goodness you feed into your mind or how much of this world do you really feed into your mind and that that's what we're referring to particularly in that text uh Deuteronomy chapter 6 talks about the mind hand you remember um Deuteronomy chapter 6 says teach them when you start, teach them when you uh, uh, wake up teach them before you sleep and particularly around children it's always influence the power of influence whether it's god's word whether it's whatever you just need to make sure that exeni mabavuka the first thing that they begin to see is godliness uh during the day halfway during the day remind them of godliness before they sleep or the last thing they see or the last thing they hear must be god's word so that what guards them before what guards them at the start of the day what guards them at the middle of the day what guards them at the end of the day has to do with ngunungulu because if that is not the case then there's always branches of messaging that gets passed through and ultimately may override whatever is there so it's important as a parent it's important as an individual to always make sure that you you've created this buffer of godliness so that whatever comes in whatever direction you you've, you've prepared yourself you've armed yourself and that's why the bible speaks about particularly the bible speaks about um the armor of god why because we fight we don't fight against flesh and blood we fight against principalities things we can't see again subliminal they are there we don't see but they are ultimately there spiritual in high places and so on so the the reality of life is that our biggest enemies conceptually or reali- realistically speaking are the things we don't see yeah we we often think that our enemies things we can see but it's ultimately the things we don't see and one of them is the subject we are dealing with today as interesting as it is okay so 
let, let's let's also go on to some examples so that we we're on the same wavelength. So a, sub, a subconscious mind is way more powerful when it comes to information processing. So subconsciousness is able to process 20,000 bits of information simultaneously, while consciousness can deal with only seven or, or with, with seven or plus or minus two bits of information at the same time. So you, you can understand which one is greater. So whatever lies at the subconscious mind is actually much deeper uh, than, than what lies in our, in our conscious being. So think about it. Think about it really, literally. So uh, a lot of what we have is actually things we, <laughs> we, we never take note of. Uh, so... Did he go yeah. out again? Yeah, boy. Hi, hi, can you hear me now? I, I went dead for a moment. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, Daddy. So, what's the last slide that we were on? Yeah, Brother Teresa. Before I bombed out. Okay, no, it's fine. We, we can hear you. Yeah, Daddy. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're buffering, but we, we, can, we, we can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, sorry about that. Yes, yeah. no problem. Okay, okay. So, uh, like I said, the majority of what sh makes us is is ultimately the things we cannot perceive. So, it's, it's very crucial to note that. Now, examples. So, McDonald's. S three words, really. Three words. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Every child. Um, most most people love this product why because of, of the message it says i mean we all know how how bad the food is and how unhealthy the food is but again we find ourselves there why number one a strong marketing campaign and and the words in itself tell you straight i'm loving this thing yeah you know you may not think about it but think about it really once you see this sign what comes into mind is these three words i'm loving it like the message is so powerful uh so simple yet so strong uh i'm, I'm loving it every time you eat mcdonald's i yo, i'm loving it you know and you look forward to having more and more and more and more and more uh, think about their their meals for children what is their meal for children called a happy meal uh, if you want your children to be happy, buy them a happy meal. Uh, I, I hope you're understanding how strong these things really do come across. Uh, you take them lightly, but they are there. I mean, it's a very strong message. We, we seldomly think about these things, but that's how strong they are. And, and, and this is where I think as, as church folk, we really, uh, we, we really don't think how, how important it is, how we come across, you know, as a simple phrase can, can can win a lot you know uh, can do a lot particularly in, in in the church so the study of words and how we use them is is quite crucial and how we relay the truth is, is quite crucial and i'm not saying we should be manipulating people's minds no and that's not really what the point is uh it's it's particularly about how we use words because uh certain words uh, and can have more more depth and, and understanding and more influence, especially if they're used quite wisely. Okay, I'm loving it. Typical example. Uh, you show this thing to your kids, the first thing that comes, I want to, I want to be there, I want to be there. Okay, uh, the other thing is, uh, if you do some research around particularly uh, 
the Coca-Cola bottle, as an example, uh, is something I want to talk about quite briefly. Have you, have you ever thought about the, the shape of the bottle as an example? Do you know, significant investment was done in terms of the shape. Uh, have you ever heard someone says, I, uh, uh, your, your body is like the shape of a Coca-Cola bottle? There's, there's a reason why. Uh, the, there's a reason why. So the engineering around how it looks like is particularly there for a reason. So even as you hold it, it becomes addictive, particularly to males at the time. Uh, when you hold it, it must remind you of something. It must remind you of a particular shape. Uh, as you open it, as you drink it, you know, all these things are, are, are particularly yeah, brought into it. In fact, uh, one of the ads they had Coca-Cola was was actually burned because of a, a certain level of subliminal messaging that was even contained in. I, I don't know how many of you have have, have seen a, an ad a, a TV once. Yeah, Coke. Uh, all they did was open the 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 can and then started pouring this on top of Ama Ice, and you hear the sound, you hear the opening, you look at how it gets poured into the glass, and and and. That you're done, you're finished. I mean, again, you're looking at a product that is so unhealthy, it's not even fun. The amount of sugar that's contained there, that's number one. Number two, e Coke was 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 made to clean metals, but today it's one of the most consumed liquids in the world today and the most loved liquids in the world today. Every meal comes with a Coke, you know? Uh, so that's really what we're talking about. It's it's so strong that it it overpowers the 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 bad in 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 that container or the bad in the content because that's the power behind the the messaging that goes with the actual product. Amazing. Uh, obviously, we did talk about uh, uh, the Lion King. One of the things I, I want to talk about briefly when we, when you look at Lion King, I want to spend some time on this. Is that one of the things I saw is that a lot of a lot of cartoonists, by the way, I'm, I don't have the video here. I'm not showing the video. A lot of cartoonists, uh, very sick cartoonists, by the way, uh, sometimes would draw uh, certain body parts or certain things, uh, and then draw the ca uh, cartoon character on top of those. Uh, there's a lot of these things. I've, I've shown them previously on many presentations I've done around subliminal messaging. I, I can't show them now, but the, the, some of the things that the lawsuits contained, because you could pick it up based on some of the cartoon characters. This is basically what they did. Um, yeah. Uh, and obviously, if if you study uh, some of the, the issues around the the lawsuits, uh, particularly Lion King, has suffered is that if you look, read the history, it, they'll tell you that it's one of the most violent movies you, you would ever see on the screen. Interesting. And we, we thought we were watching, watching Amapu Vizi and things like that and the small things there, but it's actually quite massive. Okay. So let's get into the issue of, of music as an example so, so we can get to the end of our lesson. So uh, this was what we call a German wine and French wine experiment that was done uh, some time ago. Okay. So uh, basically what happened here is, is German and French wine was basically scaled at the same time, the same price, uh, the same sweetness, and displayed in the same British supermarket. So British supermarket. Uh, and then they started to play, interestingly enough, German music in the store. Uh, so when they played German music in the store, uh, you remember you have German and French wine. So when they started playing German music, sales of German wine increased on days German music was played. <laughs> and same for this French wine when French music was played. And ultimately, it had a direct influence as to the, the buying power of them based on the music that was played. And buyers self-reported little to no influence of store music on their wine purchase. No one even thought uh, to pay attention. But subliminally, they were like, you know, it's because of the music that was played. That one of the things they noticed is that there was more uh, French wine being bought when French music was being played and more German wine that was bought when German music was being played. Interesting. Uh, just to bring more, con uh, more context into what we, we're referring to, particularly around this. Uh, and that's why... You, you start to think about why music 
in some places it actually played like the type of music played in restaurants some type of music played in whatever uh promotes certain environments and certain fields that people end up buying certain things the way they want to buy it. okay cool um got the evidence to the soul so how does do subliminal messages work okay so we talked about visual sight we talked about auditory means the things you hear sometimes by touching something uh it it it, it all, almost sends a particular message to you uh the things you taste send a particular message vest vestibular balance or movement can can have an influence in terms of how you think uh pro 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 perception or body awareness uh sends a particular message so in, in other words uh, have you ever seen those ads where it's advertising motor but he has a naked woman on top of the car what what does that have to do with with the car but ultimately it influences your buying decision without you noticing it or must advertise a, 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 a type of water as an example and here's a guy lifting weights and he's all muscled up and so on that influences your your, your buying power because in your mind you also look at yourself you see you see you're this guy but i've always wanted to be in that shape and and there are certain messages passed around those things in particular yes you join a gym because you saw someone looking in a particular way okay so what does all of this have to do with music okay education page 167 and page 168 uh Ellen White talks about this. It music is a precious gift. Number one, as a foundation, music is a precious gift of God, designed to uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes, to, and to elevate the soul. Now, very important things there. I want you to pick up. First one, Mtulo is a gift from God. Yeah, although it can be used in other ways, but ultimately, it's 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 very very nature was created as, as a gift. It was a gift from God, so it comes from Kunkul. Hence, Lucifer. Who, who was the archangel at that point? Uh, Sasa Zurini was 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 the the chief musician, and and that is obviously his skill has not changed. Nanoma Asubile Zurini, and designed to uplift thoughts. So understand how it enters the mind, uplift thoughts. So it has a huge influence in the thoughts, uplift thoughts. Initially designed to uplift Ingondo and the thinking thereof. Uh, to high and noble themes, can the opposite then transpire? Think about it. Of course, yes. Uh, to inspire and elevate the soul. Uh, think about Ingo Mazga Arkeli. Those of you who you now we live in this world, so we know what we're talking about. Uh, I'm gonna. Mm, 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 mm. What do you think that is doing to the thoughts? Okay. What do you think it's it's doing to? I, okay. I've told this story before. I remember when I was in Cape Town. I, I I saw a lady back then when I was dating very young. So I was dating and my friends were there. Uh, so I met this lady at Cape Town. Eventually that evening, after having the session with, with the people there, she went away. And after going away, my heart missed her so much. And guess what? I played a song. And the song I played was, uh, If I Could Turn Back the Hands of Time. Meaning my mind wanted to go back there. And that song seemed to marry the situation. And my thoughts seemed to go back to the moments we spent and so on and so forth. Are you understanding where I'm getting to? When a boyfriend dumps you, what, what do you want to do? You want to play music. And guess what? That music takes you to a particular place and time. So it's it's amazing, really. It's it's seriously amazing what, what influence and power music has. Uh, and on what themes it shares with, with, with our conscious being at. At, at at different intervals can inspire and elevate the soul. Uh, so it can inspire, and at the same time it can elevate the soul. Again, the opposite is quite true as well. Okay, uh, so when we listen to music, it it gets processed in different. I, I won't go into that. So as soon as it goes, it gets into your ear, then it has a number of things it does. Okay, uh, uh, so if for instance, if you look at the motor con cortex that has to do with movement foot tapping and dancing and playing an instrument uh then your pre prefrontal cortex deals with the creation of expectations violation and satisfaction of expectations nucleus occupants deals with emotional reactions to music uh, so as you can see every single part of your brain it gets touched with music like no part of your brain is left out music touches every part of our of our, our cerebral processing so it, it it touches every part of our brain, and we need to understand this because that's how 
I'm broad and how powerful music is in in, in its in its sense. Okay, so uh, okay, then a study was done, interestingly enough, about the type of genres of music people prefer and ultimately leading to the personalities people generally have. Uh, <laughs> this is very interesting. One of the things I've seen is I, I, you can almost tell what type of a Christian someone is by the nature of songs that person always selects. There's some of us who are, uh, are what we call, um, I, won't, I won't say really, it's almost Christians who, who, who are always reflective of, of, of their hard situations so they're always thoughtful of to them it's it's always about carrying the cross they are always thinking too hard about their current situations they're not thinking about overcoming too much but it's always ingoma zo kala you know tears and things like that and that simply tells the the type of christian you are because you, you're always stuck in, in the situation you're going through, and sometimes you you need to break away from that and and implore music that that that, that gives joy and 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 reminds you that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So sometimes you don't always need to be in that. So sometimes you need to break away from that and uh, and 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 have that music as well because it's, it's, it's important to, to, to get to that. So let's, talk, let's look quite easily around the personality. So one of the things that I was found is that people who are generally linked to the blues uh, uh, or like listening to the blues have high self-esteem, are creative, outgoing, gentle, and ease. Jazz fans have a high self-esteem, are creative, outgoing, and at ease. Uh, classical music fans have high self-esteem, are creative, introvert, and at ease. By the way, Nina Bazali, you would know that one of the advices psychologists tell you is that if you want your, your child's development in terms of its uh, one of the best things to do is during the nine months while the child is within your belly uh, is, is that you play classical music because the structure of that music uh, helps helps the mind uh, uh, develop quite quite well classical music in in a sense is is a brilliant thing to do particularly if even if your children are born as young as they are one of the things you need to involve them is is how music is structured and and the classical upbringing around music is is the best one of the best things you could do piano as well as classical music take them to music school and that will help them develop quite well rap fans uh, generally have high self-esteem and outgoing uh, uh, there's no creativity or interest interesting there opera fans generally have a high self-esteem of creative and gentle uh, country and western fans are hardworking, outgoing reggae fans obviously yeah have high self-esteem are creative not hardworking. as you can tell the music is is slow yeah but outgoing they're gentle and at ease but i know dance fans are creative outgoing but not gentle yeah, so got your boyfriend to lie. My tender, you to to to. He's not gentle. Okay, indie fans have low self-esteem, are creative, not hardworking, and not gentle. Bollywood fans are creative, outgoing. Rock, heavy metal fans have low self-esteem, are creative, not hardworking, not outgoing, gentle, and at ease. So some very interesting things you get there. Chat pop fans have high self-esteem, are hardworking, outgoing, gentle, but are not creative and not at ease. Soul fans have high self-esteem, are creative, outgoing, gentle, and at ease. Some very interesting uh, things there we see from that study. Uh, yes, and obviously someone like Johann Sebastian Bach, uh, when he wrote his music, he said, yeah, everything was really to the glory of, of God alone. Yeah, so classical music amazing okay matthew henry says here is woe to those who dote upon the pleasures and the delights of sense the use of music is lawful but when it draws away the heart from god then it becomes a sin to us uh, amazing quotation from matthew henry one of the uh, uh, expositors of the scriptures i like i like his commentary a lot um so here is woe to those who dote upon the pleasures and the delights of sense uh, and 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 he does not to forget that he almost forms a foundation apart from God, then it becomes a sin to us. So, ask yourself a question: What is in your mind? Ah, I'm losing people again. Uh, sorry, guys. 
Yeah, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Uh, am I still audible? Uh, Teresa, please let me know if you can still hear me. No, I can hear you, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> In Zima, let down I'm charge. Uh, okay. So where is your mind? You need to ask yourself, where is your mind? Ultimately, where is your mind? How is it caught up in all of this? Okay. Uh, so Daniel tells us a very interesting story uh, as, as we go to almost the 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 the, the end of oh, we are Vakal and Diabulela, as in Pure and Wayne. Uh, Daniel 3 tells us something very interesting, the story of Daniel 3 from verses 1 to 18. Now, because of time, I won't read it. It tells us something very interesting, that Nebuchadnezzar obviously builds, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar builds an image of gold, you know? And he builds this image of gold, and he wants everyone to bow down to it. And the Bible tells us something very interesting. It says, when you hear the sounds of every kind of music, then you are to bow down to the image. It's very important to understand. When you hear these sounds, then you need to bow or worship. So music, and when you really study the book of, of Daniel, one of the things I need to say and mention, by the way, if you do a careful study of the book of Daniel, uh, it, 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 is a, it is a the journey of the remnant in the last days particularly the, the historical narrative of the book of Daniel. So when you really study this, it's it's basically things that transpire in the end, telling us how music will have an influence in our worship. Yes, influence in our worship. These three, few, by three, Bazalan, did not bow. Even at the sound of any, they did not bow because they knew what proper worship is all about. In the last days, God again, and in the last days, we are brought to question, particularly around the subject, music will play another crucial role, a de de determining role in, in how we worship God in the last days. And that's what we, we want to really get into. So certain themes I want us to consider as we near to a close. Uh, Testimonies, volume 9, page 143 and 144. She says, it is not loud music that is needed, but clear intonation, correct pronunciation and distinct utterance. Let all take time to cultivate the voice so that God's praise can be sung in clear, soft tones, not with harshness and shrillness that offend the ear. The ability to sing is the gift of God. Let it be used to his glory. Okay, number two. Then she says, those who make singing a part of divine worship should select hymns with music appropriate to the occasion, not funeral notes, but cheerful yet solemn melodies. The voice can and should be modulated, softened, and subdued. We're losing our minds. And, and, and this is what then happened, particularly in 1900 in the end. I want to take you through this because I think it's going to be the, 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 the last few quotations and which, which Ellen White will talk about what will happen just before probation closes, particularly in the Church of God. Uh, so this is Stephen Haskell reporting to Sarah McIntyre uh, of what took place once in no, 1900 in Indiana. She says, oh, but attended a, a conference there, uh, which was held by church people. He, he says, we have a big drum here, two tambourines, a big bass fiddle. There are two small fiddles, a flute and two cormets and an organ and a few voices. They have a garden of spices at the song book and play dance tunes to sacred words. Yeah. I was watching something uh, on, on, on TikTok. Those of you would have seen uh, something about Maporisa. And it sounds nice, but there's a dance tune to this. And this is what we're talking about here. They have never used our own hymn books except when elders breed or Haskell speak. Then they open and close with a hymn from our book. But all the other songs are not from the other book. They shout amens and praise the Lord. Glory to God. Although there's nothing wrong with it. Just like in Salvation Army service, it is distressing to one so the doctrines preached correspond to that as the poor sheep are truly confused. Now, this is a description of what is happening here. And, and think about the tent, uh, tent crusade we sometimes go to where there's lots of shouting and dancing and 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 playing of loud drums and and and, and all of that is termed 
the, the, the Holy Spirit's moving. But then she says, Selected Messages, Book 2, page 36 and 37. The things, uh, so Bam Tazel Elamite, and then she responds as God's prophet. She then says, the things you have described as taking place in Indiana, the Lord has showed me would take place just before the close of probation. Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. They will be shouting with drums, music, and dancing. The senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such methods, in such a bedlam of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods of making of none effect the pure, sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truths for this time. Better never have the worship of God blended with music than to use musical instruments to do the work which last January was represented to me would be brought into our camp meetings. The truth for this time needs nothing of this kind in its work of converting soils. A bedlam of noise shocks the senses and perverts that which, if conducted aright, might be a blessing. The powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and noise to have a carnival, and this is termed the Holy Spirit's working. No encouragement should be given to this kind of worship. The same kind of influence came in after the passing of the time in 1844. The same kind of representations were made. Men became excited and were worked by a power thought to be the power of God. Yet it wasn't. Yakubega, she goes on to say, in the last days, Satan will make music a snare. The Holy Spirit has nothing to do with such a confusing of noise and multitudes of sounds as passed before me last January. Satan works amid the din and confusion of such music, which properly conducted would be a praise and glory to God. He makes its effect like the poison sting of the serpent. Those things which have been in the past will be in the future. Satan will make music a snare by the way in which it is conducted. God calls upon his people who have the light before them in the word and in the testimonies to read and consider and to take heed. Clear and definite instruction have been given in order that all may understand. But the itching desire to originate something new results in strange doctrines and largely destroys the influence of those who, who would have power for good if they held firm the beginning of their confidence in the truth the Lord has given to them. This is, this is obviously her uh, referring to what happened in Indiana. Uh, last quotation. She then says, music is the idol which many profess Sabbath-keeping Christians worship. Now, now think about it slowly. Like, I, I can't get that in my mind. You know, sometimes but we have to begin, like music, music has become a snare. Like, I've watched people not listen to 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 to, to sermons, not listen to to prophecy studies, not listen to but you'll find them at concerts, you'll find them at at in in it. And we become so excited, you know. Uh, young people, when you talk to young people about church music, music, you know, and some of us ha have have become musicians, and and this is where it becomes dangerous because those who practice. Sorry, those who practice music in the church with no scriptural foundation are the most dangerous people to employ in our churches. One of the most dangerous people in the churches today are musicians who have no relationship with Christ because they sing not from, not from a, 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 a foundation or a relationship that arises somewhere, but they sing from what itches them and not necessarily what, what, what brings uh, people to salvation. So music, an idol which many profess Sabbath keeping Christians worship, music has occupied the hours which should have been devoted to prayer. Can you say Music is the idol with many profess Sabbath keeping Christians worship. Satan has no objection to music if he can make that a channel through which to gain access to the minds of the youth. Yes, Namtlanje, we talk about youth problems, it's music. Music is extravaganza. Music, this, this, music, music, music. And there's nothing wrong with music, but understand if it becomes the primitive thing in our worship, if it becomes the primitive things in our programs, then we are losing it. Namtlanje, but I'm an Free to go listen to people on the Sabbath, and this is what we're referring to. Anything will suit his purpose that will divide, divert the mind from God and to engage the time which should be devoted to his service. He works through the means which will. Exact, oh, sorry, if you come in, please mute yourself. Uh, just make sure you're muted there. Sorry. Uh, she continues to say, uh, 
he works through the means that will exert the strenuous influence to hold the largest numbers in a pleasing infatuation. While they are paralyzed by his power, when turned to good account, music is a blessing, but is often made one of Satan's most attractive agencies to ensnare the souls. When abused, it leads to the unconsecrated, to pride, vanity, and folly. It might be a little something very interesting, by the way. It, uh, now we talk about worship here. It's more tenders that don't repeat stuff. Ne? Uh, that's worship. Prayer is worship, and so is singing. I'm saying, in a pin the pin doing the who's a go vala spend the twenty minutes those that we are booya, we are booya, hey, we are booya, hey, we are booya, ah, we are booya. And and let me tell you something that 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 what that does into your mind. It becomes a bewitching influence. The more you repeat it, a little we are pin the pin the thing the nick dagil. I'll serve an ex afterwards. You won't even understand the truth that will be preached after that because your mind has become in. Have, have become numbed by this over alliterated or this over repetitive sound that you've heard all the time. No wonder in our churches we walk away without hearing anything because we are so into this this thing. Now I know it's going to create a lot of questions after this, but I think it's crucial to talk about. When allowed to take the place of devotion and prayer, it is a terrible curse. A lot of us don't read our Bibles, but a lot of us know many, many spiritual songs. It, and then fluent Jalama was alone. There's no correlation between that. And your your personal development is 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 not where it should be because do you know what there are people nam say about masala ngom. Mongenengoma, thank you. God bless you for that. But now hang on to Jesus more than anything else. Yeah, ingoma, hundred percent. I know they sing very well, but after that, make sure you read your Bible. Make sure because it must inform your worship. It must inform your worship. Uh, and then she continues to say, young persons assemble to sing. And although professed Christians frequently dishonor God and their faith by their frivolous conversations and their choice of music, sacred music is not congenial to their taste. I was directed to the plain teachings of God's word, which have been passed by unnoticed. In the judgment, all these words of inspiration will condemn those who have not heeded them. Now, in closing, I want us to look at a particular text in the Bible uh, if you have your Bible with you, go to with me to uh, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Not the Psalms 92. It talks about music on the Sabbath day. Psalms 92. How should our music sound on the Sabbath? It's If you go on it, the heading says a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. So God, the avenues to the heart. Add your senses. Guard your senses. So Psalms 92 talks about the type of music that must be played on the Sabbath. It must be a solemn sound. That's Psalms 92 and verse 2. So guard your senses. Uh, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Any questions?